as I was making my bed and just putting the slides in, I thought of something. I realized there is something peaceful and free about camping on BLM land and forestry land. You know, you can put your slides out, your bed out, and you can just relax. And the reason I thought about this was because I thought, okay, I'm gonna be city camping. You know, there's no such thing as really stealth camping anymore, especially with a rig like mine. Um, but I've gotten away with it for over two years where I pretty much just figured out where I was gonna park in the city, in the outskirts of the city, in the neighborhood, you know, near a park, near the beach, wherever. And out of two and a half years, I got, I think two knocks on the door and one ticket. So for not paying for campgrounds, I looked at all the money that I saved and I just thought, you know, my odds are really good. I've saved a lot of money, um, but I didn't always have 100% peace of mind. You know, there's always that, you're always kind of like on guard, ready and ready to go. And when you're out in the desert, when you're out on BLM land, it's different. When you're camping with someone else out in the desert, it's completely different. You know, it's like your guard goes down more so. So I just realized like, I have to change years. I have to prepare myself for, again, city camping. Um, it's a little bit more work because you have to figure out like where you're going to sleep for the night. You know, when you're out in the desert, you don't think about these things. You don't have to, I mean, mildly you know it's like oh where am i gonna go today okay i can pick any spot your main concern is as far as myself is just being away from the crowds right being away from uh the noise and stuff and so that's not a big stressor but when you're camping and you're going into the city because i'm going to be traveling quite a you know quite a distance and i'm going to have to park in cities and you know it's like I'm, I don't, I don't do campgrounds, you know, I mean, I could right now, it's winter time, they're really, you know, affordable. I think now in winter, I could probably get a campground for like 20 bucks, which I think is fair. I think that is a fair price, but when they were charging $55 and you know, like, no, I'm not paying that. You know how many, you know how much food I can buy with that? <laughs> I was going to say, you know how many uh, shoes and clothing, you know, articles of clothing you can buy? But I'm not one of those shoppers. I'm not, uh, you know, even when I was in in a house, you know, I just, I had my outfits. I was fine with my outfits. I didn't have to keep up with, you know, the latest trends. Um, I just bought like classic stuff that would last me for a while. And, you know, shoes, you know, I had probably, well, I won't lie. I maybe had 20 pairs of shoes, but they were all functional. They all were, you know, worn. And right now my biggest, I would say expense is gas and food. So yeah, that $55 can go to food and gas. So I'm not spending it for somewhere where I'm just gonna go there, park and sleep and leave. It doesn't make sense to me. I'll chance it. I'll chance an $80 ticket. So anyways, yeah, I had actually I had two tickets, but one of them was for overnight parking. The other one was just stopping at a park really quick to let Roxy go potty. And the city has an ordinance that no RVs are allowed to park on city streets in Huntington Beach. So I won't be giving my money to Huntington Beach. You know, I used to do my laundry there, get gas, get food. And, you know, like I, I spend my money in places that I, you know, stay the night. And so, yeah, I won't get my money there, you know? So, I mean, I'm one person, so it doesn't really, you know, bother them or hurt them. But um, I think if a, enough people do that, it's like, you know, you make yourself friendly to us, we'll spend money in your city. Like for instance, one city that I'm going to, Solving, they allow you to stay there overnight as an RVer. 
You know, as long as you're not taking up space in the business district, it's a certain area where it's like all the tourists go, right? It's a really cute town, very touristy. So as long as you're not parked there during business hours and taking up, you know, room and just, you know, staying there for days, they understand that they don't have an alternative for homeless people. And the mayor had said like, homelessness is not illegal. It's not against the law. They're not criminals, right? So why are we punishing people that live in their vehicles? Um, especially when we don't have a service, we don't have, um, you know, an alternative for them in the city. So we don't have a shelter or anything like that. So yes, we'll allow them to, li to sleep in their car and park on the street, but they just can't be in one spot. I believe it's for like more than 72 hours and they can't be in that touristy area during uh, work hours. So it works out for everyone. And here's the people that live in their cars. They're going to buy gas and food and you know things in that city because they're not being run out. And I'm the kind of person when I go through there, even if I don't stay there, I'm going to spend money there because I encourage and I support cities like that, that don't criminalize people for living, sleeping in their vehicles. You know, like what's the alternative? You want them to sleep on the street? That's not illegal. I've seen people sleeping on the street. No one's getting a ticket for that. You know, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Anyways, um, yeah, so I have to like change gears as I travel. I have to go, okay. You know, this is where iOverlander comes in really handy. Just you don't sleep as well, you know, you do sleep, but not as well because it's like, you almost have like one, one ear open. Like, what is that, you know? Um, but I know the reason that I was put on the road and, you know, so I, I know that I've had extra uh, favor and protection and grace over me, but I never know when that's gonna end. So I'm always prepared for my season to end. And um, it might be coming up shortly, so who knows? Who knows? I just take it one day at a time, right? Anyways, I luckily I have access to a free dump and water fill up here at Joshua Tree National Park. So I'm gonna go up there, just do everything I need to do and then get on the road. Um, since I shattered my screen, I'm gonna stop at a store and they will fix it. And uh, yeah, we've got lots of things to do. I've gotta do laundry, I've gotta wash my rig. I've gotta just prepare, but I've got days to do it. So I'm not worried about it. The wedding isn't until this coming weekend. So I have all week to, you know, like every day I'll do a little bit. Like one day we'll go get our nails done. One day we'll get, you know, I'll get my hair done another day you know it's like um so it's not a big stressor it's funny things that you would do in one day if you're living in a house you know when you have a car and you're living in a house and you know it's like you would do all these things in one day <laughs> when you're in a rig it's like oh let's spread it out in two or three days it's a slow life it's a slow you know it's off the hamster wheel it's like not everything has, not everything is in, is in urgent mode, you know? Um, I would like to get my screen fixed because it's hard for me to read and uh, it's hard to see the picture if it's clear and if I'm getting the shot right. How do I look? Am I getting the shot right? <laughs> vanity, vanity, it's all vanity.